Hi students, and welcome to today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian, and I'm streaming to you live from Central Europe. I hope everybody has had a healthy and productive week and is looking forward to a fantastic weekend ahead. Hi, Kyber. Hi, Shiro Jidin. Hi, Eldar. Good to see our regular students in the class. Hi again, Daniel. Nice to see our members joining in. Everyone, this is an IELTS Task 1 writing for the academic IELTS. And we're looking at a diagram in today's class that was requested by one of our members. So I decided to put this into an all chat class for today. And again, the materials, the class is presented to you by aehelp.com for academic IELTS help. Check us out there. The website is dedicated to academic IELTS. For general IELTS, check us out at g-i-e-l-t-s-help.com. That's general IELTS help.com. On both of our websites, we have loads and loads of materials to help you prepare, including help for the writing task one, task two. Uh, this is the academic version of the website here with the blue background. You can click that big red button to join the premium package. And then once you do, you get into your My Student account. I'm just going to darken up the screen for two seconds and show you where you can find writing help. Now, of course, this is a paid service because we have to give money to our editors for doing the work. But once you're in your uh, My Student account, you have the uh, big task one, task two writing button. You can click on one of these like the uh, task one and then uh, you get a uh, word processor and you can choose some uh, diagrams and some tables to look at and work with. So that's in your academic website. Of course, the general is different. It's the green background that has letter writing, but it has that same uh, task one task to option there for you. So make sure to check that out. Use that editing service. It will work well for you. All right, everyone. If you have questions about that service or our products, just send me an email, adrian at aehelp.com, and I will gladly uh, respond. Today we're doing task one, tomorrow for our members question and answer Q&A session. Of course, everybody can watch that and then we'll have speaking part three at this time. Uh, let's take a look at today's writing task one question. Here we go. Uh, IELTS task one writing. Read the question carefully. You should spend about 20 minutes on this task. The following diagram shows the production of electricity by way of wave power. Report the main features and make comparisons where relevant. Mm, okay, so it's a diagram looking at how electricity can be made with wave power. You should write at least 150 words. Students, at least means minimum 150 words. Many students start to freak out when they see 180 words or 200 words for task one. That's not a problem. It's a problem if you have less than 150 words, okay? High band essays are usually more than 150 words. So let's take a look at the diagrams. Here we go. Our first diagram here is showing how electricity is created by wave power. Hopefully that's clear for everyone. Maybe I'll darken the screen just slightly so you can see it a little bit better. There we go, a little bit darker. Okay, so here we have uh, the first diagram. It's diagram A. It's labeled nice and clearly for us. And then we have diagram B. Uh, what's the difference in these two diagrams? So we have two diagrams. They look very 
similar, but yet they're still different. Uh, what is the difference between the two diagrams? Can anybody tell me? There's definitely a clear difference here. What is it? Uh, Le Pouge, no, the airflow is the same. Well, no, maybe you're right. Maybe it's not. Yeah, the airflow is different. You're right. So here the air is being pushed up. That's right. And uh, here the air is being pulled. Yep. Yeah, Amit, Aurora, absolutely. The wave is different. Yeah, the direction of the wave or the movement of the wave. So the airflow and the movement of the wave are different. Okay, cool. So we'll get to analyzing this in just a moment. But for step number one, uh, what we want to do is just paraphrase the question with a bit more detail. So step one, it's the overview. And all you want to do here is paraphrase the question with some more detail. So go ahead, students, do that now. Paraphrase this question and give it a little bit more detail using the diagram. So the following diagram or diagrams shows the production of electricity by way of wave power, okay? So paraphrase that, give it a little bit more detail, okay? And again, here's a look at the diagram, again, so that uh, you can add a bit more detail in there. So this is diagram A, diagram B, okay? And all you're doing here, this is the overview. The overview is the introduction. It's not two separate elements. Okay. All right. So give me a nice paraphrase. Uh, Nig Haim says the given diagrams depict the process of how electricity is produced from wave power. Nig Haim, that's a good start. Okay. Kyber says the given diagrams provide information about the manufacturing of electrical power. And then continuing on with more information. Elena says the given pictorial representation manifests how electricity is engineered from C waves with four components. Okay, Elena, I like that. It's nice. Okay. So... The provided two blueprints depict the production of electricity by way of using C waves according to two distinct phases. Okay. Yeah, so that's kind of my paraphrase. The provided two blueprints depict the production of electricity by way of using C waves according to do two distinct phases. Okay, all right. Now, the second part of your overview, so that's number one, uh, number two is the most observable feature, okay? Yep, number one. My hands doing what my brain's thinking ahead. And number two is report the most observable feature, okay? So what is the most observable feature uh, when we take a look at diagram A and diagram B. Now, of course, we're looking at the biggest visual difference. 
You don't need to look at the small details. And the biggest visual difference is you see a large wave coming in to land here. And here you see a large wave receding back out to the ocean or the sea. So the wave's rolling in, and the wave is receding out. So give me the main feature. Put that into words, okay? I think the airflow is kind of observable, but we can get more into that. I think the wave is even more. I had to actually pay more attention to the diagram when a student said, hey, the actual airflow is different as well. My eyes, definitely, they catch the wave. I think it's a bigger feature. So uh, let's uh, talk about that. Amira Sadek says, immediately it is clear that the movement of the wave and the air are the main factors of this process. Sure, Amira, I like it. That works. Okay. Shaikh Fazil says, the given diagram of A shows that the flow of air is upwards, and for diagram B, it's downwards amidst the waves are to the surface. Shaikh, a confusing sentence, a little bit too much explanation. Keep it simpler. Keep the explanation for the body paragraph. Okay. Maja says it is divided into two steps. First, when the wave is hitting the surface, while the other is when the wave is moving away. Yeah, Maja, that works. That's good. Okay. All right. Uh, Karen Veer says the direction of airflow and wave propagates and returns. That works, Karen. Good. Okay. Hassan, too much detail. Too much detail. The wave rotating the turbine. First of all, it's not true. It's actually the air that's truly rotating the turbine, which the wave is pushing, Hassan. So be careful. And it's too much detail. Okay. We don't need that much detail for the main feature in this or in these two diagrams. So we want to keep it simple. So at first glance, I'm going to keep it even more simple. At first glance, it is clear that diagram A shows power production when the wave is moving to shore, while diagram D depicts the same when the wave is receding. Okay. So uh, here we go. That's my overview, aka my introduction. It's not two parts. It's just one part. Okay. You don't need to write a separate introduction and overview. That's unnecessary. Uh, here we go. Uh, the provided two blueprints depict the production of electricity by way of using C waves according to two distinct phases. At first glance, let's put a comma there. That's a leading expression. At first glance, it is clear that that diagram A shows power production when the wave is moving to shore, while diagram D depicts the same when the wave is Receding, receding meaning going back out to sea. Okay, all right, nice. So, step two, students, step two is analyze the diagram, the diagrams for points of description and comparison, okay, eh, six to eight, roughly, okay, and of course, that's before you begin to write the body, so students, please don't start writing like firstly or secondly right away, okay, before you put your uh, pencil to paper or your fingers to keyboard, of course, uh, paper-based versus computer-based exam. Uh, make sure to look at the diagrams and uh, label your points of 
analysis. So what you actually want to discuss. All right. Um, so here uh, we're looking at diagram A. I'm not even going to show you diagram B. What do you think I should write about first in this body paragraph? So what do you think um, we want to put first? Okay. What do we what what should we write first for our reader here? Now remember, this is an expository essay. Expository essays seek to explain and describe. Okay. Mr. Who knows everything? You don't need to include uh, your own knowledge here about how turbines work. Just using what's available in the diagram is enough. Okay. And please don't uh, copy paste the same question over and over. Otherwise, I'll have to block your chat. So please be mindful of that. Okay. Uh, Karen Veer, very good. The components. Yeah. Rangana, very nice. The structure. Yeah. So before we get into the process, we should discuss the components of the structure. So clearly, this is a man made structure that's built on land and into the ocean. It's a very interesting looking structure uh, at that. So we have this structure here, which has a column. The column contains a turbine, and then the base of the structure uh, extends out into the ocean with a large chamber, which captures the wave. Okay, I hope you uh, caught that or you're listening carefully. Uh, so the structure would be the first. And then, of course, at the back of the structure is where the electricity is uh, stored. So it's generated in the turbine and stored in the back, and it's built onto the cliff or the sea wall. Uh, as we can see, the structure doesn't change. In diagram B, it's the same structure. So it's just the process that changes. So it makes sense that, first of all, we just do a nice description of the structure. So that's our point number one. Um, now the structure, I would probably break that into two elements, uh, the column and the base. Okay, so I would call that the base. That would be my point number two. Or it might make sense to do it the other way, the base first, and then the column extending from the base um, because going from the ground up is usually more sensible. So let's talk about the base and then the column. It's even better writing structure, okay? So that would be one and two. Now, uh, what would be my point three? What would be my point three and then what would be uh, my point four? So what am I writing next? All right. No, Elena, I, that's just your imagination. I mean, it's built, the structure is built onto the cliff wall, so don't worry about that. So, what would be my second point here? Yeah, Rangana, very good. It's the process, right? So, the wave moving in towards shore, pushing the air up through the turbine out at the top of the column. That would be my point number three, of course producing electricity in the process. So that would be my point number three. Fantastic. Okay. And of course, we could say that's point three, point four, if we want to get very technical. So the actual end result being the electricity. Now, in the second diagram, we get into the reverse of that process logically. So in this way, it's quite a an intuitive diagram, meaning it's fairly simple to see what's going on here if we're paying close attention. So here we've described all of the structures. We don't need to do that again, obviously. So here we're discussing the process of the wave going out. So this would be five uh, points there, maybe six, with this whole process of electricity being produced. So that would be point five and six. Everybody good? We're all on the same page? Is everybody following there? Anybody lost? 
Uh, Maksud, the introduction and the overview is the same. There's no difference, okay? An overview is the introduction. It's weird to separate those two. It's awkward to have two small sentences. It's just better to have one nice, smooth-flowing overview that includes a paraphrase of the question and the main feature, okay? All right. Yeah, so Harpal describing it in reverse direction. Emmanuel says, okay, good to go. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, so point number one, uh, we are discussing the base, okay? This is our point number one. Let's write that now. So uh, point number one, you have the base of this structure, which includes the chamber that is built up against the cliff wall and extends out into the sea used, of course, to capture the wave. Now, if you basically just type that really fast while I was talking, you have your first sentence, but put it into your own words, okay? So that's our number one, is describing the structure, okay? So describe the structure. Start with the base of the structure, the chamber, okay? I'm gonna do the same, and then uh, we'll compare our writing. So this is our body now, okay? So looking at both diagrams in further detail, a unique structure is needed for this process, starting with the base, which is built up against a sea wall or cliff and extends out into the sea. On top of this foundation is a large chamber that is used to capture the wave, the waves. All right, so that's my uh, first sentence for my point number one. Looking at both diagrams in further detail, uh, a unique structure is needed for this process, starting with the base, which is built up against a sea wall or cliff and extends out into the sea. On top of this foundation is a large chamber that is used to capture the waves. Okay, so you should have something similar to that description. Okay. So Kim and Rita is asking, what should I do if I can't understand the diagram, which means that I don't know the verbs to use for each step or where to begin? Uh, Kim, you have to understand the diagram, otherwise you can't answer the question. So believe in yourself, practice at home so you can use the right words for these diagrams. Keep your language simple. You don't have to be an engineer. You don't have to overcomplicate. Start step by step, okay? All right. Hassan says, this is a technical structure comprised of key elements such as the column, turbine, and chamber. The base is constructed near the sea so the waves can hit the chamber to create air pressure. Uh, Hassan, too much, too quickly. A little bit confusing. Um, just think about this, Hassan, Sadiq. If I close my eyes and I read that without knowing this diagram, can I see it? Can I understand it? That's always a good test, students, of the quality of your writing, okay? So this is just a quick tip while you're thinking about how you should go about this, okay? So this is a tip to keep in mind. Uh, tip. If you read your essay to a friend who cannot 
see the diagram and the process, uh, can they understand what you are talking about? Think about this. In a Band 9 essay, when a person reads your response, they should be able to closely redraw the same diagram or diagrams. If the drawing, if their drawing is very different, then think of why. Okay, does that make sense? So if you're giving a good explanation to someone, it's like over the phone, they should basically be able to retrace or redraw. If not, then uh, you're not doing something right. Maybe you're not organizing the ideas, you're not connecting them, your descriptions are off, okay? So keep that in mind. Keep that in mind. Angelina says, going into more detail, the structure is built upon a seawall or cliff. It consists mainly of two parts, a chamber where the wave goes in and a tower where the air is pushed by the wave and is channeled to move the turbine. That's nice, Angelina. When I read that, I can picture it. I could draw something similar to what we're looking at here without actually seeing the diagram. So that's good, Angelina. That's the type of writing. Uh, you have a couple words that are slightly off, but overall you're still at about a band eh, eight. Okay, seven, five, eight for sure. All right. Remember, students, it's a very small difference between band seven, five, and nine. You really have to have perfect writing to go get into those very high marks. Okay. All right. Uh, Nazir, General IELTS Task 1s, please check those on our General IELTS website and YouTube channel. Okay. All right. So good. Uh, let's keep going. So that's the first part of the structure. Uh, for, for me, I'm not explaining any of the process yet. I just want my reader to have a really clear idea of this structure, especially because it's unique. It's not like we all uh, come across or encounter these uh, wave-generated uh, power stations on our daily life. So we're kind of like, uh, what? Um, so we really should just give a very clear picture to our reader about what we're dealing with here, okay? Um, so I'm going to uh, now describe the column, okay? The column. That's all I'm going to do with the turbine, the column, extending upward, the battery storage or power storage out at the back of the uh, column there. So that's all I'm going to do is focus on that. Do the same. So this is our number two, just the structure, okay? All right. So on top of this foundation is a large chamber that is used to capture the waves. Extending upward from the chamber, chamber's side connected to the seawall is a large column that houses the turbine. On the back of the column, a power storage unit is attached. Okay, so again, you don't need super complex language, you just need clarity, clarity, okay? So again, if I read this and I ask you to draw, will you draw something similar to what I'm looking at? Hopefully, otherwise I'm not doing it right. So here we go. Looking at both diagrams in further detail, a unique structure is needed for this process, starting with the base, 
which is built up against the sea wall or a cliff and extends out into the sea. On top of this foundation is a large chamber that is used to capture the waves. Extending upward from the chamber's side connected to the seawall is a large column that houses the turbine. On the back of the column, a power storage unit is attached. Okay. Fast Technical Channel says, looking at the diagram in more detail, there is a technical structure comprised of a base against the cliff which is extended out into the sea. Along this, there's a large chamber that collects the waves. Very nice, fast technical channel. That's what we're looking for here. Okay, very good. All right. Shaikh says, yeah, I think that's clear. Okay, now we get into the process. Okay, and here, if you really wanted to, you could separate it into another paragraph because describing the structure and describing the process are kind of two different elements, but you really don't need to, okay? These task one essays, they're so short that you don't want to have all these tiny little paragraphs. Remember, a separate paragraph is a big break in the reader's flow and mind. So you don't want to have a lot of one, two sentence paragraphs, okay? Task one really should usually be just three paragraphs. Overview, body, summary, okay? That will make for a good essay as long as you're writing it well, all right? Roshni says, moreover, a base chamber is attached and extends upwards that contains a turbine which helps to move the water waves. Roshni, I don't think it moves the water waves, but otherwise it's a good description. Okay. Uh, Fanny Ginting, yeah, it's absolutely okay to write more than 200 words. Just don't go over 20 minutes. Okay. So it's minimum 150 words. Remember, it's minimum. Yeah. Uh, Kushwan Singh, housing is a verb to house. Uh, it means to contain. So house is a verb as well. That's a great question. Very good. Okay, so now I'm going to describe the process. Okay, so wave rolls in, pushes the air, which is captured by the chamber and pushed up towards the column, thereby rotating the blades, okay, the blades of the turbine and producing electricity in the process. Okay, so that's what we're going to do now is describe this movement of the wave, then the air. Okay, the wave stops here and then goes back. It's the air that moves up and then rotates the turbine, of course, like a fan. It's got blades. So when you have a fan, uh, students, these uh, elements are called blades. Okay, just like a knife blade, all right? And um, it's, it's, you can also call it fins would be another acceptable uh, term or synonym. Um, and then, um, of course, the air is pushed out at the top of the column. Otherwise, it would explode. And then uh, here, the electricity is generated and captured uh, so that it can be used by the public or business or whoever, all right? Okay, uh, so please uh, describe that process in your own words. In your own words. I'm going to do the same and then uh, we can uh, compare. Uh, students, it's not that difficult. I mean, uh, remember, academic IELTS, most students are taking it to do university abroad. And uh, if you're uh, going into an engineering program in the U.S., the UK, Australia, I guarantee you're going to see much more complicated diagrams than this one, and you're going to have to write an essay, and that's going to be coming in the first year. So if you're having difficulty describing this diagram, ask yourself, how am I going to describe a diagram in my first year of biology or engineering in university? Okay, so practice, keep it simple, all right? Uh, don't overcomplicate. This is the time to learn. Your brain is a supercomputer and then some, okay? Our brain's limits are unparalleled. Remember that, all right? So 
In diagram A, the wave moves towards land and pushes the air through the chamber and into the column. As the airflow is forced out of the column, it turns the blades of the turbine and in the process produces electricity which is captured by the storage unit. Okay, so I'm not an electrical engineer either. I'm kind of making this up as I'm going along. Mohammed Kahat, no, this is not for general IELTS. This is for academic IELTS, okay? For general IELTS students, it's gieltshelp.com and general IELTS help YouTube channel, okay? All right, Peya Basak says, moreover, when the waves head towards the seawall, aeration moves the turbine clockwise, which stores electricity in the battery. Very nice, Peya. Great use of vocabulary. Seawall, aeration, turbine, storage in the battery. Very good. There you go. Hassan says, when the waves hit the base, it creates high air pressure, which rotates the turbine blades and creates an electrical power in the storage. Very good. Okay. Julian Villamizar says, as the sea waves approach the shore, they get into the chamber and push out the air inside, which in turn moves the blades of the turbine, converting the motion into Electricity. Yeah, motion is also known as kinetic energy. Okay. So kinetic energy, just uh, going to give you a little bit of vocabulary there. Uh, converting the kinetic energy. Kinetic energy means motion energy, but we don't say motion energy. We say kinetic energy or kinetic force, okay, for those into physics, uh, into electrical power. Yeah, and of course, students, the better your vocabulary, the better your sentences, the higher the band score. That's the way it works, right? It's an exam. All right, and notice how some of your peers, they've got a pretty good idea around this, okay? Um, let's see, Roshni says, as soon as the waves roll into the chamber, the air is pushed through the turbine, which leads to rotating the fin. Subsequently, that generates electricity, which is stored in the battery, while the airflow exits at the top of the chamber. Very good, Roshni, nicely done. All right, so a lot of good, uh, good responses there. Now, let's look at Diagram B. So in diagram B, the uh, wave is receding. It's moving back out to sea, away from the cliff or seawall. And in the process, it's creating what's called a vacuum. That's where the word vacuum cleaner comes from. So it creates a vacuum, which pulls the air back into the chamber again, turning the blades of the turbine in the same direction and producing further electricity, okay? So that's what's going on here. Now, of course, this is somewhat of a contrast. So it's opposite to uh, diagram A. So make sure you use the right connecting words, okay? So go ahead and describe this part of the process now. So we've described the structure, that's fine. Now we want to describe this part of the process. I'm going to do the same, and then we'll compare, okay? However, 
in blueprint B, the wave recedes out to C, and in doing so, creates a vacuum which pulls air through the top of the column, further turning the fins of the turbine in the same direction as previously and the turbine continues to convert kinetic energy into electricity. Okay, lots of commas there to separate out that process into a nice, long, complex uh, sentence there. Uh, Mohammed Khad, task two uh, for academic in general are very similar. So that those you can watch on this channel. And Mohammed, uh, gltshelp.com for um, examples for task one general IELTS, please. There's lots of videos there, especially in the premium package. Okay. Uh, Nick Heyman says, conversely, the airflow in the chamber pushes the wave backwards to the ocean. No, 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 no. Nick Heyman. Uh, the wave is much more powerful than the airflow, okay? Uh, remember, the wave is huge. We're only capturing a part of that wave. Um, the wave is massive. It's the wave that's pushing and pulling the air. Uh, the air does not do any pushing or pulling of the water. It's, it would be insignificant. So careful with that, okay? Remember, nature is much more powerful than man. Um, okay, Billy says, in the first diagram, the air is pushed up by the waves into the inner part of the structure, going through the chamber to the column, which forces the fins to rotate and produce a certain amount of energy. Yeah, Billy, that's for the first one, of course. Samuel, IJ, remember, says, in diagram B, the wave moves in the opposite direction, uh, and as a result, pulls the air behind it and further turns the blades to again generate electricity. Okay, good. Some nice writing there. Paya says, conversely, in diagram B, when the oceanic wave recedes, the airflow through the tube is pulled downward, which moves the blade counterclockwise. Paya, the word is counterclockwise, okay? So clockwise, not anti, but counter. So clockwise, going in the direction of the clock, okay? And if you're going against the direction of the clock, then you are moving counterclockwise. It's not anti, it's counterclockwise, okay? So counterclockwise, clockwise, one word for both, okay? All right, so very good so far, students, very good, okay? All right, this is what I have. I'll read it for you, and then we'll go into the final element of our task one here. So many of you used conversely, which is good. That works really nice. I used however. So however, in blueprint B, the wave recedes out to C, and in doing so, creates a vacuum which pulls air through the top of the column, further turning the fins of the turbine in the same direction as previously, and the turbine continues to convert kinetic energy into electricity. Okay. All right, so now, students, uh, if you're looking for a band 7, 7.5, you can probably stop here. If you're looking for a band 9, include a summary. Okay, so step 3, 
include a summary. All right. Um, a summary should be uh, a piece of information that can be clearly seen and learned uh, from the diagram or chart. Okay. So what is a piece of information? So if we, um, if we uh, look at this, a blueprint is equal to a diagram in most cases, Angelina. Uh, a blueprint, this is definitely a blueprint. blueprint. Um, if I asked like how I can build one of these, this would be a blueprint. Blueprint is that blue piece of paper that shows how a house looks or is built, okay? So um, here, what can we summarize about this? What, what do we learn about this uh, A and B process? If we look at it really carefully, there's definitely a really nice piece of information that we can summarize, okay? Uh, Kushwant, because the correct word is counterclockwise, not anti-clockwise, that's why, okay? Um, Hassan says, in summary, in this complicated process, the dynamic power of airflow is converted into electricity by the turbine. Mm hmm, Hassan, I think that's good. Uh, Angelina says, this is an elegant design despite a complex and ingenious structure. Okay, that's not bad, Angelina. Yeah, it's definitely a very elegant design for sure. I agree with you. There's something else that's going on here. What's going on? Roshni says, in summary, it is clear that when the wave flow recedes in both these processes, electricity can be gener generated and utilized in both processes. Uh, Roshni, yeah, that's pretty close to what I'm thinking as well, okay? So this is what I would summarize here, okay? And now this is where you can use in summary, or if you want to use a different way, you can say to sum up, sure. To sum up, these two diagrams clearly show that as long as there are waves, crashing against the seawall, electricity can be continuously produced by the constant movement of air in this elegantly or ingeniously designed power station, okay? So again, just showing you what you can do for that band nine, right? Um, so to sum up, these two diagrams clearly show that as long as there are waves crashing against the sea wall, electricity can be continuously produced by the constant movement of air in this in ingeniously designed uh, power station, right? Uh, because we see that in the diagram. So wave is moving in, turbine spinning. Wave is moving out, turbine keeps spinning. The turbine doesn't stop. The turbine just keeps going and going. If there are waves, this turbine's moving. So makes sense, right? We learn that from this diagram. So we definitely want to put this kind of a structure on a shoreline or against a cliff wall where you have constant waves or as many waves as possible. Okay, uh, Nick Hain, there's a really good HD video on maps and actually comparing two maps on the channel. So make sure to check that out. Okay, students, let me read the full essay and then uh, we'll see. It's probably about 230, 40 words. This is your band nine sample here. Um, so read with me, okay? 
The provided two blueprints depict the production of electricity by way of using C waves according to two distinct phases. At first glance, it is clear that diagram A shows power production when the wave is moving to shore, while di diagram B, make sure to have right information, diagram B uh, depicts the same when the wave is receding. Looking at both diagrams in further detail, a unique structure is needed for this process, starting with the base, which is built up against a sea wall or cliff and extends out into the sea. On top of this foundation is a large chamber that is used to capture the waves. Extending upward from the chamber's side connected to the sea wall is a large column that houses the turbine. On the back of the column, a power storage unit is attached. We can just say a battery. <laughs> In diagram A, the wave moves towards the land and pushes the air through the chamber and into the column. As the airflow is forced out of the column, it turns the blades of the turbine and in the process produces electricity, which is captured by the storage unit. However, in blueprint B, the wave recedes out to sea and in doing so creates a vacuum which pulls air through the top of the column further turning the fins of the turbine in the same direction as previously and the turbine continues to convert kinetic energy into electricity to sum up these two diagrams clearly show that as long as there are waves crashing against the seawall electricity can be continuously produced by the constant movement of air in this ingeniously designed power station. That is your band nine response to this diagram question. Students, I will post this on the YouTube community uh, board as well as uh, on our uh, website's blog so you can check it out there. Uh, AEHelp.com students for academic IELTS and G-I-E-L-T-S help.com for general. That's where you want to go if you want to learn the right strategies for high bands on IELTS and for high scores in your college and university uh, courses as well. You're very welcome, everyone. That was great participation. I hope to see all of you tomorrow, members. Uh, get your questions ready for your Q&A class. Everybody, uh, you will have a speaking part three class tomorrow as well. Okay, have an awesome rest of your day. Have a great start to your weekend tomorrow. Much love to all of you from Budapest. I'm Adrian signing out. Bye for now.